Tonight I'm transmitting RISPR on a band I don't often use, 630 meters. That's been a bit of a challenge and the antenna is likely to be a fraction of a percent efficient. Nevertheless, the highly efficient mode makes it possible to get results that you might not get on other modes. I'm running about 200 milliwatts from the Zactec RISPR transmitter that I've previously reviewed. The signal from that goes into a variometer and loading coil. Here's a crude diagram. This smaller coil is the rotatable variometer. That's smaller than the larger coil and it allows the inductance to be changed. There are also taps where you can have bigger changes in inductance. And the signal from the transmitter is tapped off on a lower part of the coil. I'm somewhat dubious about this and I suspect the impedance match is poor. Connected to one end of the variometer adjustment is the antenna connection. You can see a SO239 with the centre and outer connections shorted. The coax feed line is about 15 or 20 metres long. It goes into the roof and then down to the ground where it connects to open wire feed line. That goes to the G5RV inverted V that I've got outside. As for the earth connection, that's connected to copper pipe underneath the kitchen sink. There are various tapping points along the coil every five or ten turns. This point, which is quite close to the earth end, is where the transmitter is tapped. This clip effectively shorts out these turns, as I round more than was required for 472 kilohertz. Held right up against the radiating coax is this field strength meter. It drops dramatically when I remove the earth connection. There are also large changes when I change the tapping points of either of the alligator clips along the coil. It's a good idea to monitor your transmissions. The FT817 isn't a very good receiver on 630 meters, but for this application it's fine. It picks up sufficient signal even without an antenna connected, provided your antenna in this case, the radiating feed line is close enough. The signal strength you hear on the FT817 depends on where you've got it tapped and it can provide some guidance as to where the best point is. Then you can use your field strength meter to get a finer indication. Even though I have a lot of reservations about the efficiency of my antenna and particularly the impedance matching, between the transmitter and the loading coil, I've got some quite good results. The longest distance is when I was spotted by VK7TW near Hobart. Closer in, you can see spots from most directions northwest, northeast, southwest, and some long distances to the east, over 100 kilometres. Something that's worth doing is comparing you against other stations. This is all reception by VK7TW and if you look at the list of stations, the station most comparable to me in terms of distance and output power is VK3WRE. If you look at all the spots of VK3WRE as received by VK7TW and note their average signal strength and then do the same for me, then you can get a rough idea as to the differences between our antennas. The number of spots that I've got and the distances of some of them show that 630 meters whisper is quite a forgiving band and mode despite the antenna limitations most people have. If you want to get the most from Amateur Radio, check out my ebooks. All have been favourably reviewed and you can get them for a low price in electronic form. 
visit my website vk3ye.com and follow the links or search their titles in Amazon.